Hello everyone, thank you for coming to this presentation. My name is Rafael and hopefully we have some fun. Today I would like to tell you a few things about Flutter, why it's becoming so popular and why you might consider using it. Ok, so let's get started. Cool, I will start by introducing myself. I first tried Flutter 5 years ago. I was an Android developer back then. I was looking for new, fast ways to develop applications and one of my friends recommended Flutter as a good alternative. I was really surprised how easy and fast you can build UI interfaces and how easy you can iterate on it. I moved to the UK and got an opportunity to make an app in Flutter. I really like it so I started contributing more and more to the community, joining meetups and I never moved back to Android. I mentioned Flutter a few times already, but you may ask what exactly is Flutter? On its website, Google describes it as UI toolkit for building beautiful, natively compiled applications for mobile, web, desktop and embedded devices from a single codebase. Adding to that, it is free and open source, meaning that you can see everything on GitHub together with sources for Flutter's website. You can contribute to the project and report bugs or suggest improvements. We will talk about how it works later, but for now let me just say that it's written in Dart and C++. Quick history how it came to this point that Canonical partnered with Google and decided to make a new installer in Flutter. At the beginning, Flutter started as a stripped down Chrome runtime. It was an experiment in which developers wanted to check how much faster UI rendering might be and it was targeting 120 FPS. It went through many stages and languages, but Dart fit all the boxes to be both interpreted and compiled at the same time. They made their first demo at Dart Summit in 2015. After that, everything happened fast. Flutter was targeting Android and iOS first, but support for Linux, Windows, macOS and web came after that. Flutter is also very portable. For example, Google engineers took Flutter and made it run on the wall within the office which is, I must say, not very common place to run a UI framework. But a more common thing would be running Flutter on Xbox or Raspberry Pi without Xorg on Wayland, which is supported by the community. So, you might think that it sounds interesting, but don't we have JTK and Qt already? Well, yes, those are great too, and I'm not saying that you should rewrite all your apps in Flutter. That would be cool exercise though. I just want to say that Flutter is backed by many companies now, and at first it was only Google who contributed to it, but now engineers from many companies do. As we will see shortly, thanks to composition over inheritance and reactive nature of the framework, it's easy to code UIs in Flutter. Like I said before, it has great cross-platform support, but if you want, you can create your own embedder and run it on almost everything. It's fast and compiles down to the native binary. And last but not least, it's also great news for Linux community that full source code and development is available on GitHub for both Dart and Flutter itself. I've seen a few misconceptions how it all works, so let me quickly explain how Flutter is built. In short, there are two parts. The one that you code in, which is written in Dart, and the engine part, written in C++. The engine uses a library called Skia for drawing pixels on the screen. Skia can draw using OpenGL, Vulkan, Metal or Software Renderer. Of course, some things require calling the underlying platform and for this we have a plugin system thanks to which we can make native calls. On Android it calls Java Runtime, on iOS it's Swift, but on Linux it's C++. It's also worth noting that lately Dart got FFI support thanks to which you can call C compatible libraries. There's also a tool which can scan C headers and create those bindings. If you are interested, check the documentation to find out more. All right, now that everyone has some understanding what Flutter is, let's jump to the demo. I will go slowly at first, but for later parts, I will fast forward the demos and talk so you won't get bored. This is not a tutorial, and I will be writing everything in one file, but hopefully you will get the feeling on, of how to use this framework and how powerful it is. Okay, so let's jump through the demo. Maybe for the first step would be to install Flutter. So let's jump to the Flutter webpage, which is flutter.dev. 
you can see that is the main Clutter website. We can read through it, but for us, let's just get started to a server platform. For us, it's Linux. And the first good thing is that if you want to install it, we can choose two options. One is to use snap package. So if you just want to develop your application, this is probably the easiest one. Or we can download the filter source man manually. I choose this path because I sometimes change filter source code, but yeah, for you, maybe that would be the, the preferred one. I've already done this in, in advance, so we won't be seeing me just, you know, doing some path, ma path manipulation and trying stuff with the command line. So now let's jump to the terminal. Great, so after installing Platter, either through the package or manually from source code, then we should be able to run command name Flutter Doctor, which should display our options. So in my case, I'm using the stable ch channel, and also I can develop Flutter applications from web, Linux, or Android. And I have here two IDs, in IntelliJ IDEA, or VS Code. Today I will be using VS Code, but the other options are Vim, which has LSP support, so all the you know code completion and other stuff which works with VS Code can also work with Vim or Neo Vim, if that's your choice. So, so to create the Flutter application, we need to enable Flutter Desktop first. I've already done that, and after that we will be able to develop Linux applications because it's because Flutter is currently in beta, so it's not enabled. But after invoking this command, then you will be able to develop and create applications. So to start, let's just create the application. For us today, we'll be developing the the file manager. So let's create a project, click enter, and then we can try to run that. So let's try running this on Linux. We currently cannot see this, but let me just change the scene. And here we can see that it's our default application. This is basically what Flutter creates when you're creating the project. You can click this button and this will increase our counter. Okay, so let me change the scene once again. All right, so here is our code editor on the left. Here is our running application on the right. I went ahead and created the launch application for that. You, for that, you need to download the Flutter plugin, which is available in extensions. So just go to extensions and download the, the Flutter plugin. And that should also install the Dart plugin. So you will have the complete an environment to, to run Flutter applications. So let's maybe take a look at our file structure. So we can see that it created the, the directors for Android, iOS, because you can run that, like I said, for test, web, and also we, here's our Linux directory. And this is our custom embedded written in C. It uses JTK. And here we can see our lib directory. So this is where our application lives. That's where we spend most of the time writing code inside this directory. There's also pubspec.yum and what this is, is this the project setup. So here's our name of the application that we created, description, uh, the version, environment, and this is the Dart version that we're running, our dependencies. So currently we only, we only use Flutter from the SDK and Cupertino icons, some development dependencies like testing and other stuff which we will go through later on. So now let's open our source and let me quickly delete everything. So we will start from scratch. Okay, so let's start coding.
Okay, great. Our application went red for a second, but we will fix it soon. Let's quickly look what is happening here. On the top, we are importing material library, which implements all widgets from Google Material Design. Next, we have the main function, which starts our app. And then we have our main application class, which is stateless widget. To put it simple, Flutter has two main types of widgets, stateless and stateful. We use stateful widget when we want to store some value in current widget and stateless if it's immutable class. All right, let's save our file and we can see that our application went white. What does happen? If we take a look here in the corner, we have the restart and we have reload. They both do the same thing, but well, almost. The restart completely launches this other application from scratch. So if you have some state, then it gets also reset. But hot reload tries to preserve the state of our application. So for now, let's try to create something more useful. And if I click save, it should fail. Yeah. And the reason is that the material app needs some page to display. Let's create another stateless widget. Let's call it main page, for example. And then inside of this, let's create something which is called scaffold. And scaffold is basically the skeleton app of our material application. So now if we go to material app and create a home and pass the main page to it, and then we can see that we have the white screen again. Let's try to create the app bar and see how, how it works in action. So let's try to create app bar with text inside it and say hello. Here we come. Okay, so let's try to implement something more useful uh, other than empty string screen with the title. So we can change our widget to stateful one because we'll hold the files of our disk. So now we can see that we have the widget and now we have its state. And instead we have the same build function like again and in our main app nothing is changed. I will copy one function because we have limited time. So let me quickly do it. Okay, so inside this our state class, let's paste one function, then let's paste some variables and I will explain it in a second. And do one more thing, our abstraction. So, okay, so that's everything. So let me quick, quickly save this. Okay, so we have some problem with imports. So let's import. And yes, in this case, we can see that we have some problem that if we try to import it, we can see that. And the reason is because it's in file and imported uh, a little bit different. So if we go up to our import section, we can add our dependencies. If we go to the semicolon, so now if we save. We should have everything all right. Yeah. Okay. So let's go and see what I pasted. So what this basically, what this function basically does is it lists files in the given directory and it returns it as uh, either directory or file items. So you see, I created here all items. So every files and I have directory items and file items. So this will display them in given order. We also get the current highlighted item. I went a little bit ahead of, of myself. And we also have the home deer, which we'll add soon. And for our abstractions is basically my type. So I added if it's either a file or directory and my class custom model to display it quick, quicker. So name, name without the extension, path, item time, or if it's hidden or not. So nothing big, but I just don't want to spend time, you know, for you to see me writing this file, 
function because it's pretty boring to be honest and there is no point in doing so. Okay, so maybe let's try to display some pulse in our application. Let's try by implementing the init function. So Right, so our int function runs before build method and it reads home environment variable so we can display contents of our home folder. So let's try display something on the screen and that will be the body of our scaffold and maybe there's a column of children and what we can do is display text and check uh, our file manager we need to invoke this function so let's get files in the given directory and create a directory based on our home directory and we need to explicitly set that it's not null so this function should load all items and split it into directories and files Let's display the first one and we see that it failed. And why did it fail? Because we have the state. So the code reload won't work, but if we do the code restart, we have dot Android. So this is our Android folder. Okay, but you can see that this is pretty boring. So maybe let's display all of them in one go. So what we can do, we can get all items and map them and you can map all of those items to the name and do it to the list and we can see that we displayed everything we also got the exception because we run out of space so to quickly fix that we can do list view instead of column so let's check change that to list view and now we can see that our exception is gone and we can scroll through our items. Okay, sure, but we can see that there's a problem in our approach. First of all, we can see also the hidden files and directories. And we also see that it's in alphabetical order, but also it doesn't distinguish between files and directories. So let's quickly fix that. Okay, let's create two lists, one for non-hidden di directories and second one for non-hidden files. After that, we can merge them together and replace current items with our newly created filtered structure. So that list is a little bit shorter. So you can see that we have the apps, desktop, and all, all, all the folders, and then we can see the files. Now we have another problem. Our application looks pretty boring, to be honest. So maybe let's first apply the theme from the yellow theme. So to do that, we need to go up to our main application. We can see that we are importing the yellow theme already and we can do very, very simple thing. So first apply the theme, the yellow light theme. So we'll be using the light theme by default. And for a dark theme, we can do yellow.dark theme. In theme mode, theme.system so this will check if we are using the light theme or dark theme and then apply it to our application and that should be basically it we can see that up bar has changed to the yellow theme and now we should use the proper one okay now for a second thing we probably should display this in a grid okay so to do that we can change our list view to responsive grid list Responsive grid list and you can see that we have some squiggly lines so we need to import of course and what else we need to desired item width so this that would be the width of our one uh, block let's choose the 72 for example and now we see that it looks a little bit different it looks like a grid which is good and 
you know, we can see that this line is a little bit long. So what we can do is to add column here and that would change it to be more readable. Okay, so before we can continue, I must tell you a little bit secret. I went ahead of myself and I added to pass back two assets. One is for the folder black and one is for text. So our two icons, which we'll use for our application and I added them in assets folder. So we have for the black and text. I also added other ones for test, but let's focus on those two right, right now. Let's go back. And what we can do right now is to, we can extract this to a separate Flutter widget. So let's do that right now and let's name it item. Should probably use different name, but you know, naming is hard. Hope you forgive me this one time. Awesome. Next, we can extract our text into a new Flutter widget because you want to do some more customization. And I'm also adding a flag to distinguish if item is highlighted or not. And after a few fixes, it's ready. To make it a little bit better, we can add icons to each type of element. First, we wrap text in column so we can add SVG picture widget. We check if current item is either folder or file and we apply a different icon and it looks already better. We can see that text is still not centered, so we should also fix that. But first, let's add some padding to have more space. I also add a size box to increase the gap between the icon and the name of the item. We can see that I'm experimenting quite a bit with the design, adding padding here and there, but I just wanted to express how powerful this process is. We have fast feedback loop, which encourages developers to experiment with different designs. I can imagine that developer sits with designer and fine-tunes application as much as they can. You can see that application is also responsive to window changes. All right, now we should fix that text, which is also very easy, by the way. I just set max lines limit and overflow in case we have to deal with really long names. And to center the text, I just specify text align. Brilliant. It's time to add click handler to highlighted items. We'll wrap everything in container and specify box decoration. You can see that I again use Yaru colors and highlight everything in aubergine first. Because border rarely uses fancy these days, I specify this too. Our new aubergine highlight is a little bit too much, but fortunately we can put more transparency to it. After seeing it working, it's time to use our, our is highlighted variable. With simple if statement, we can set box decoration when the variable is set to true. To handle clicks in Flutter, we can wrap our widgets in another widget called gesture detector. And since we want to specify function from the parent, we pass it through the constructor. With this approach, we can pass highlighted flag based on current highlighted item and then click logic. It's important to call set state function, which will inform Flutter to refresh UI for state changes and repaint the change part of the screen. All right, we can now mark our files, but when we try to double click on some element, nothing happens. Let's implement this logic quickly. In our item class, we add on double tap callback. We set it to gesture detector and pass it through the constructor, just like we did with the single tap. Next, we create on double tap function we check if the item is directory or not, and we implement small function to reset current state. After which, we change directory to items directory. And that's it. Keyboard shortcuts are essential to desktop programs. Let me show you how easy you can do that in Flutter. First, we need to create intent, which we will later listen for. Intent is just a normal class, which can optionally hold some data. In our case, we just have an entity class. Next, we wrap application in a shortcuts widget and specify map of shortcuts. In my case, it's up arrow, which will invoke newly created intent. After that, we need to specify actions widget. The reason why it's separated is because we can use the same intents for different parts of our application. 
but for the sake of simplicity, we are using them always. We also need to specify focus widget to shortcuts to be fired. If we hold restart the app, we can see that after clicking up arrow, we navigate to the root of the hard disk. We still have a little bit of time, so let me quickly demonstrate a few more things. We all know that size panel is very convenient in file manager, and since we don't have one, it's time to change that. Let me add side pa panel color first, and we can start. If you start to think that this whole thing is too easy, then you are right. I simply wrap grid in row, which allow me to have two views next to each other horizontally. Next, I add container with specified width and create items inside this view. Thanks to Canonical's work, I use the arrow icons very easily. Now we can reuse our well-known change directory function, put it on click, and our code fails. And the reason why it fails is because we are not specifying constraints how big grid can grow. It wants to paint itself infinity, basically. To prevent this behavior, we wrap a responsive grid list into expanded widget. If you are interested how Flutter decides on widget sizes, search for Flutter box model. I don't want home to feel lonely inside our site panel, so I'll add projects item too. And that's basically it. I know what you are thinking right now. It's just another boring application. We have that already. So I guess it's time to add just a little bit of eye candy stuff. You can notice that when we click on some item, it simply highlights it. Wouldn't it be better if we could animate this transition? Fortunately, Flutter has very good support for animations. We just need to change container inside our item widget to animated container. Next, we specify duration, how long animation should be. Now, we just need to change how we are using box decoration. Instead of setting it or not, I'm setting aubergine color when it's highlighted, but when it's not, I put transparent color. Flutter detects changed variable and animates its value when it changes. I change aubergine to, to be more darker for visibility. Maybe it's not the best design, but you must say that it was very easy to implement. Okay, last thing, I promise. I just want to show you integration with external programs. If you are watching closely, you probably noticed that we are missing logic for opening items. Thanks to OpenFile plugin, we can open programs which are set as default for a given extension. To do that, just navigate to on double tap function and simply use plugins open function to open the file. And that's basically it. Okay, so hopefully it wasn't that boring, but let's recap the demo. We created a responsive application very quickly. It was easy to develop UI, even if we didn't have some functionality, like highlighting the folder, it was quick to implement. Also, hot reload and hot restart are awesome tools to help you iterate on your project. Animations are built in and easy to use. And by the way, it's also very easy to create new custom animations. We saw libraries made by Canonical, thanks to which we could integrate Flutter more easily with our desktop environment and plugins made by others to open files. I think it's a good place to mention Linux-specific integrations, which we haven't seen in the demo. I only showed two libraries, but Canonical guys have done other cool stuff for integrating Dart with Linux. To name a few, we can use Network Manager, Tbus, G-Settings or PackageKit. And again, everything is open source and available for you to use or contribute. There are other integrations done by Google, like Native File Selector, Windows Size Checker, or Menu Bar Integration, and of course, many other libraries done by the community. You might ask if we can do everything in Flutter now. The answer is yes, but also not quite. Linux still lacks native view support and texture view support. There are pull requests implementing that, so it shouldn't be too long to see this functionality in the framework. There's also no sound plugin for Linux, but that could be relatively easy to implement. So we still need to wait for a few things, but it's a good time to start writing your apps. 
If you like what you just saw and would like to learn more about Flutter, then check out official documentation. Also, there are many great tutorials on YouTube with source code on GitHub. Flutter community makes a hump day Q&A YouTube stream every Wednesday, well, almost, where you can ask your questions regarding the framework. To get a taste of awesome UIs, search for Flutter challenges in your search engine of choice. You might be surprised how easy people implement applications in Flutter with custom UIs. If you need to talk with any developers, there's also a Discord channel. If you already know Flutter and would like to help you with Linux adoption, here are my tips for you. Write and share your Linux programs. You can, for example, use Twitter for that. Don't forget to mention Flutter and Linux accounts. Write posts about your experiences and problems that you've encountered. If you find bugs or have some suggestions how to improve the framework, report issues to Flutter's GitHub page. Speaking of improvement, take a look at documentation. There is always something to fix. Last but not least, help Canonical to develop their libraries and add support to popular libraries on pub.dev. That is all I had for today. Hope you had some fun and at least I got your interest in Flutter. Thank you for listening. Now I think we have some time for questions.